everybody, so we're back talking some more Ahsoka on the channel, episode 4 dropping this week, which means that we are now halfway through the season, so hopefully, since we are halfway through the season, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit, not to say that I didn't find last week fun, especially when half the episode was dedicated to this very epic space battle, but I was excited about the possibilities going forward where we left off last week, since it seems like Balin's skull is going to be sending a bunch of old droids, etc., to try and hunt down Ahsoka and Sabine in the forest. Now, for me, personally, I think this week delivered a lot. I actually think this might be my favorite episode of the entire series so far. There's a lot of stuff we got to talk about. Immediately first off, though, we are presented with a very interesting conundrum for Ahsoka and Sabine. Since Ahsoka is worried about whether or not Sabine can be counted on fully when she's presented with this potential difficult decision whether or not to destroy the map as opposed to letting Morgan Ellsworth bring back Thrawn, which would mean that she would never see Ezra again so that is a very tough choice we find out later on that Ahsoka's worries were proven to be accurate like as much as I enjoy Sabine as a character some of the decision making here does make me scratch my head even though I understand her thinking behind it last week we had that extended space battle sequence which I thought was pretty cool episode four just knocks it out of the park in terms of action sequences and lightsaber battles I mean immediately we're kicking off in the force with Sabine Ahsoka and the droids that action sequence in particular probably was my least favorite amongst all the various ones we saw this week. The one I was most excited for was the round two between both of these sets of characters, Sabine versus Shin Hati, and then Maroc, the infamous Maroc versus Ahsoka. Out of these two, I definitely preferred Ahsoka versus Maroc. It seemed like for a bit there they were going to have this extended, well-rounded duel, but Ahsoka eventually does take him out, which is kind of a disappointment here. It's weird because when it comes to this character of Maroc, ever since he was introduced, there have been all of these different speculative rumors or theories on who is the true identity of this character. I saw some wild ones, whether it's going to be Starkiller or Cal Kestis. I saw some people saying maybe it's Ezra. It ends up being a complete nobody. He gets cut and turns into a giant cloud of farty mist. I guess he was maybe created by the Night Sister. That's all I can think of. Maybe Morgan Elspeth has created an Inquisitor of some kind. I don't know necessarily what that was. As far as I'm aware, I believe Maroc is the final Inquisitor out of the bunch that we've seen so far, unless they create more in Extended Universe stuff. So, uh, what an underwhelming way to take out the final Inquisitor. I was nervous, though, for that battle between between Shin Hati and Sabine, just because Sabine is not a great Jedi at this point. She doesn't have a lot of training. We've already seen her get her ass kicked by this woman not too long ago. She completely ignores Hu Yang's advice that Ahsoka and Sabine should not split up because they're much better together. And the battle goes exactly like you would expect it to. She does try her best to use the Force once again, and it doesn't work. We are eventually going to see her use the Force. I'm just calling it right now. The way that they're continuously setting it up, eventually... She's going to move something with that hand. This was something that I've kind of alluded to in the past, but I'm really kind of torn on how they're trying to include Hera into the narrative, just because she has been so adjacent to everything going on. She is still a vital role in the show, but she's not with everybody. Eventually, we are getting her together with these characters, at least some of these characters, because she basically disobeys orders, brings a bunch of people, including Carson Tava, which is cool to see him appear once again after The Mandalorian. He's getting a lot more appearances. Him and Mon Mothla are kind of duking it out for these Disney Plus appearances. The most interesting portion of this episode for me is when Ahsoka goes to try and take out the map and Balin's skull is there because we learn a little bit more of the backstory of Balin's skull. He's such a fascinating character. It's really a shame that Ray Stevenson is doing such an amazing job with the character and we're probably not going to see his future explored. As when him and Ahsoka are conversating, turns out Balin's skull knew Anakin Skywalker and apparently Anakin spoke very highly of Ahsoka. He also knows the dark path that Anakin went down and became Darth Vader etc. But the duel between the two of them, Ahsoka versus Balin, that was pretty solid and it went on for quite some time and it builds up so much tension over the course of the entire battle. The ending of the battle is a little bit weird since he does kind of win, although Ahsoka was injured from her hands being burnt severely by grabbing onto the map. After knocking Ahsoka off the ledge though, Balin's skull turns into the ultimate gaslighting master manipulator when Sabine walks up and he easily convinces her to hand over the map because she wants to see 
see Ezra again and even invites her to go on their mission together. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, Ahsoka was right to be worried about Sabine, how badly she wants to see Ezra again to the point where she's going to go on the mission with the bad guys and see Thrawn again. I don't know. If I'm Ahsoka, I'm disappointed. But where we end off the episode was pretty hype as a longtime Star Wars fan since Ahsoka wakes up in the world between worlds and you hear a voice that sounds pretty familiar and she turns around and it's Anakin Skywalker, Hayden Christensen, and he looks like he was ripped right out of Star Wars Episode 3. Well, it's kind of ominous though because the episode does end with the Vader theme, so uh, we'll see where that leads in the next episode. But overall, with Episode 4, I had a fun time with it overall. I'm very excited to see where we go next with Episode 5. But now that you've heard my thoughts on Ahsoka Episode 4, make sure you share your thoughts down below. How did you feel about this episode? Did you like the episode? Did you not like the episode? Either way, show your thoughts down below. Do you have any theories where we're going to go with the rest of the episodes, particularly next week? Share those thoughts down below because part of the fun this had that conversation with you guys in the comment section down below. And thank you guys as always for the videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel so they reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. For the next time, I'll see you guys later.